Hello, Chris Day, ZL1CVD here again. Okay, so today, what have I been doing? I've been looking at S meters. Uh, the accuracy of the S meters on the FT991A, to be specific. I've got two FT991As. This one uh, I purchased last year from DX Engineering, brand new. And this one I purchased off Facebook earlier this year. I love this one so much. Plus I wanted another rig to, uh, well, for all the testing I do. <laughs> so I make these little cat displays and my uh, very good customer in Japan has come back to me and said the Japanese use a lot of short range because uh, of the build up cities. They use a lot of VHF, UHF uh, and they were complaining that the S meter is not accurate with the transceiver. Uh, it doesn't match up. So, just how it works, how does these S meters work? Well, how do the cat displays work? Well, quite simply, they it has its own little microcontroller in here, and it sends the microcontroller is programmed to request data from the transceiver via the CAD interface, the computer interface, the serial interface. Uh, so it sends a request to the transceiver, basically says, okay, what frequency am I on and what's the uh, signal strength? The transceiver sends back a, uh, the frequency information and it also sends back a number between 0 and 255. I take that number, I scale it, and I display it on a on a meter here and that's basically how it works so the cat display itself is if you like is pretty dumb the uh, all it does is send information to the transceiver the information comes back it interpret it interprets that information and displays it on the screen okay so that's all good so if the transceiver is not sending the correct information the cat display won't be able to display it now when I set up the uh, lookup or the table that, that determines what S meter reading from what value comes back from the radio um, I looked uh, I referred to the Yesu um, technical supplement which is a copy of it here on the screen and uh, I had a look at this S meter table here. Now this is actually for HF. What I didn't realize is that there is a, sorry I'm trying to hold everything here, is there is a separate table over, the, and I don't know why I didn't see it, but it's just over the other side of the screen here. Um, oh, lost it, where have we gone? Uh, okay. No, we need S meter. Right. Okay, there's a separate S meter adjustment for FM, which is uh, what uh, my Japanese customers having an issue with. And what they do is Yesu uses the test frequency of 145.9 megahertz, and there's alignment procedures here. There is zero dB microvolts for uh, uh, at 1 kilohertz audio tone, 3 kilohertz deviation uh, should give you um, an S1 and then they go on to give you an S9 and they set uh, S9 plus uh, 40 ok so that's all good I had originally set the meters up for HF or the cat display for HF um, and I'd use this table here and we'll see that uh, it's not 0 dBU that they use for FM, it's 14 dBU for S1. And why is there a difference? Well, I recall reading that there is a, to do with the Earth's atmosphere, there is a, a residual noise level on the HF bands. And you know that when you tune into your radio and you listen to no signal on the HF bands, there's normally hissing going on. But you go and tune into VHF, UHF, and you'll find that that hissing's gone away. So the S meter scale is different for VHF and UHF than what it is for HF. But I didn't actually realize that at the time that we set up CAT display. 
We set up the cat displays for a use on a wide range of Yaesu transceivers. Um, and most of the S meter reading uh, will be accurate for transceivers like the FTDX10. And indeed, the, uh, it's very close on the FT991A. Uh, and the HF bands, but not on the VHF or the UHF bands using FM. Now, that is because when we further look into the um, 991A and we have a look at the block diagram, we can see that the um, the signals uh, come in onto the main unit here. The HF signal, we have uh, the VHF and UHF come in through, go through various filtering and network uh, mixes and so forth um, and they basically all come on the way down through here where they s then separate so your AM and your AM single sideband CW signals carry on through this bandfast filter and uh, get down mixed to uh, 24 kilohertz here uh, before being applied to the DSP unit for all those fancy DSPs now with this transceiver, uh, it's a compromised transceiver, so it is a super heterodyne front end, so there's a lot of mixing and so, so on going on in the front end to bring the signals down. Um, and it brings it down to a frequency of uh, 24 kilohertz. Now, well, the reason they do that is digital signal processing at lower frequencies is cheaper. Um, the higher the frequency you go, the more expensive your DSP chips have got to be. Uh, so that's why you find that HF rigs like the uh, fully DSP HF rigs like the FTDX10, the 101, they ask a premium price for those and you only get like HF in them. Um, similar for ICOM so IC7300. Um, but when you are oh, getting back to this system here, this is a hybrid rig so it does also FM and what they do is they bring the FM signal out they don't go through the DSP process, they actually bring it out here to this chip uh, assembly that's here. If we have a look at that uh, chip itself, we can see that it's a, um, it's a JRC, Japan Radio Company, um, 2591, which is a narrowband FMIF chip. So it's a standard quadrature detector, they're not actually using DSP for the FM side of things on this transceiver and that'll be why when you select a lot of DSP functions uh, when you select FM all those DSP functions disappear you can't use the things like DMR, noise blanker and so forth they just go um, that's because it's all in this chip and this chip generates its um, S meter signal separately through this uh, through the RSSI or receive signal strength indicator on the actual chip so the cat displays are going to give you an indication, but they're not going to be accurate. But how inaccurate are they? So today I spent some quite some time working that out, and uh, I'm using a, a Roden Schwartz uh, Universal Protocol Tester, which is a CMU RU. These are very similar, very very. Almo they're almost exactly the same as the CMU 200s that a lot of amateurs do have picked up off the Sally on the phone market. But this was the, was the model that they used in the factories uh, for making the phones and, and, and making sure that the uh, production items were within tolerance. Um, the main thing it has in it has a built-in splitter in it and has a high power port, which you don't see um, in a lot of the CMU 200s. But anyway, it's a very, very accurate signal generator and I wanted to make sure, I always make sure before I do my testing, well, how accurate is it? This is the cable here that um, comes out of the CMU 200 and I've got it going into a, an Aeroflex analyzer and this is an Aeroflex uh, 7100 I think it is, yep 7100. Um, these have got a particularly good spectrum analyzer and, uh, and signal generator, um, well worth it. Uh, they, they also do a lot of digital radio stuff but the you're not going to be using it unless you're using cellular. Anyway, um, back to the point. My frequency that I'm generating is 145.9 and my output level is minus 67 dBm. 
So what we can see on the screen here is that my uh, my average spectral power over here is minus 67 point something dBm, uh, which is great, which is exactly what I wanted. And then my frequency, uh, this jumps around a bit because it's, um, I don't know if you can see the markers are going either side here, because what we have up here is the test conditions are FM, one kilohertz audio says FM frequency on here, but it's actually the audio module, audio frequency, and this is the deviation 3.5. So we've got we've got our one kilohertz signal on either side, and it's jumping backwards and forwards to those. So if I was to go back here and say, okay, modulation, we'll change that modulation back to off. So we're just putting out a carrier wave. We will see um, there's none of that jumping around going on here and that the frequency is bang on 145.9 megahertz um, and we can see again that our average spectral power is 67.1 um, so it's, it's, it's 0.1 off okay now my test setup was I was coming out of this cable and going down to I did have a uh, I was just using a basically a, a T on here but then I was getting because my power was being split I ended up going directly into each transceiver and the, the basically uh, into the, either the HF or the VHF port. So I did, I, I, I actually tested on HF frequencies as well, even though the, um, the AC documentation says not to. But the interesting thing is everything was off. Um, and when I say everything was off, I mean uh, the, the conclusion I draw is that the uh, signal strength meters on these Yaesu transceivers, and probably all transceivers for ham radio use, uh, I would say, um, are not that accurate. Um, and and I, I guess there will be some SDR equipment out there which is which is a lot more accurate, but these are what we're seeing. We've got two FT991As, and we've got um, my test frequencies down here. Uh, Yesu have their own scale for S units, which is different than the ITU. So that's the Yesu DB uh, DB microvolts here, equivalent to DBM because that's sort of punching into the analyzer, and what that means in S units, and what I actually read off the screens. So everything in black here is incorrect. Um, so, for example, uh, on the top 991A, I should be reading S1 for that signal that I was injected and I and it didn't it read S0 I should be reading S9 but I got an S2.4 uh, and that was at that frequency um, and here it should be S9 plus 40 but I got an S9 plus 28 and then what I wanted to do was to see well how okay how accurate is the um, the FT991A uh, sorry the uh, CAT display 232 with its reading now remember it takes data from the radio so whatever the radio sends to the cat display is what it's going to convert to S units so if the radio is wrong cat display is going to be wrong and of course it was um, and then we find that there's even variances so remember this is on the same level this line here so this is the top transceiver and this is the bottom transceiver so one is reading S928 the other one's me measuring S9 plus 32 cat display rounded that up to S9 um, we got a bit closer on this one here, but it's supposed to be S9 plus 40 on this frequency, which was 52 megahertz. Um, but as you can see, it's all out. And I guess there's some, there is some pretty disgusting results here, really. Uh, so the thing is, I guess we're trying to make a... Um, we're trying to get transceivers that aren't designed to be lab instruments to, to measure like our lab instruments lab instruments and that's just not going to be the case but um, apart from that they do a, a particularly good job as a great all-rounder rig you know I, th I think this is the best all-rounder I've, I've seen um, and I've serviced some of the um, I, I actually used to service the older Yasus those uh, 857s 897s and FT100 100Ds 817s and 818s and I've got to say that these are uh, quite a quite a nice radio a very good compromise um, but they're not an accurate lab instrument so 
you know, you're not going to get accurate S meter readings out of them. Uh, and I can guarantee, even after, if I if I do a complete recalibration on these, as per the AC manual, uh, they will still be out because it's only it's only checking three points. You know, you've got a whole scale that goes from you know from S zero to from S zero to uh, S fifty, and on the radio it's going from S0 to 60, you know, and you're checking three points. You're checking S1, S9, and S40, uh, S9 plus 40. So you're checking here, here, and here. Well, not even at the end of the scale. So you're not even checking a log, log uh, a linear sort of range of the scale. Yeah, so. I guess there's, there's no solution for the S meters out. Well, yes, the S meters are out because they're not designed to be accurate from the start and they're not calibrated to be accurate. But anyway, fantastic little radio they are. And uh, that's the results of my testing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.